How's it going? My name is Paul Miles. I run the private stock department at PRS Guitars. And today we're going to go over some staining techniques. I brought a bunch of scrap pieces from actual private stocks, different kinds of curly and quilted maple, East Coast, West Coast maple. So we're going to go through and see how stain takes to them and and what you do to get the stain to do what you want. First thing I'm going to do is just use water to wet down the, the tops and the, and the pieces here. It opens up the grain so that the color can penetrate nicely. Helps it keep it even. And it also gives you an idea what the wood's gonna look like once you start to get some, uh, some stain or some finish or, or whatever you're gonna put on it. Really brightens up, helps you understand what the curl's doing. And you can see just by these two pieces, this was a piece of curly, it's pretty white. And it's a piece of quilt. Even the color of the wood can end up affecting the color of the stain, so. Keep that in mind as you're going. If you have a, a more yellow piece of wood that you're staining blue, at some point you're gonna have some green in there from just kind of basic color theory. So I wet most of these down, put a couple stains on just to get them dry. And what I'm gonna do is give you an idea of a couple ways to pull the stain back out to get good contrast in the curl. One way you do it is just using water. So these are all water-based stains. Um, we don't use just water-based stains, but for traveling purposes, it's just easy to be able to, to ship powders out. So here's one way to kind of pull some contrast out of a top once you start putting color on it. It's just water. And what the water's doing is it's kind of pulling the stain back out of the hard parts of the grain. So anywhere it's white is the harder part. So the color comes out easy and where it's dark, it soaks in really nice. So you don't have to, you're not really removing much out of that. It's just the harder part. So you get a nice contrast. So that's a good way to get like, you know, sort of a gray black or a charcoal finish. And the more you rub and turn your rag, the more the material comes out. But you can certainly overwork it pretty easily. The wood is pretty porous, so the more water you put in, you start to bleed, you start to uh, get a lot of staining on your binding issues. All of our tops are pretty thick, so the, uh, the bindings um, are critical to keep clean as we're staining. Usually we tape them off, um, but still, even with tape, that's, that's not really protecting it from going down and sucking out on, onto the side. So this is kind of a, an easy way to see, like charcoal. So you can see like nice charcoal and then a gray-black kind of stain too. Another way, a better way, actually, in my opinion, is just using sandpaper. So what I'll do is I'll use a 320 grit sandpaper to pull the stain back out. It's a little messier, but it's a really nice way to be able to pull the stain out without getting it wet again and sort of creating that kind of muddy surface. And as you can see, a lot of it's really coming out. Now, you have a whole another set of problems that occur when you're starting to use sandpaper. And that's just having your even pressure, making sure that you're removing all the stain evenly because whatever it looks like now is what it's gonna look like if you put another coat on it, or if you try to change the color, or if you leave it like this. Once you put clear on it, the only way to fix it at that point is to strip it. And you've, when, once you've stripped enough of them, you know that you know, get it right the first time. And these are pretty easy because they're just flat blocks. When you start putting a violin carve on it like our guitars have, it's pretty tough to 
get that nice even flow throughout the whole top. And with private stock, you know, it's not just about yellow and red and blue. It's taking those primary colors and expanding on them and how you're getting these layers of colors and these overlapping colors to create other colors and you know using the combination of oil base and alcohol base and water base to again kind of manipulate it to to achieve some really wild effects and the sanding part's a little messy too so you can see i really took a lot of stain out of that so we're now we're looking at more of a gray black and this is more of like a, of a charcoal finish and that can be it you know you can just kind of stop there and that could be a finish that could be a, a, a finished product color and I'll wet it down a little bit just to give you an idea of it's not as dark and it's got more of a higher contrast but because it's water-based, I'm still pulling stuff out, so you have to be careful because you'll end up losing that, those whites. You know, you have to be really deliberate how you're wiping guitars down. There's a couple other ways we try to get different colors coming out. And so I stained this violet, um, and now what I'm gonna do is just go over it with a couple other, co other colors to show you how you start to get these layering effects. Um, again, it's all water-based, so it does get difficult not making a mess and just creating sort of a brown, muddy color. But it's also fun because you get to add colors that, you know, traditionally you might not really want to mix, but you always get these kind of happy accidents that happen that uh, result in a really cool color. Most of the private stock colors come out of us um, just throwing color on wood and just trying to um, kind of push the limits on you know mixing color because there's not a whole lot of color so in order to get a variety like we do um, we just keep adding it and, and trying to experiment on stuff and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but it becomes slightly subjective too because color you know colors everywhere and you know everybody's got their favorite color so I'm going to go over this violet with some pink. So now, wherever it was, your hard grain lines took up the violet. So wherever it's dark, it's still dark. And now that pink is laying on top of the violet, so you're getting violet in your pinks. And so you're starting to see these red and blues really starting to come up that weren't there with just one color. And the rags get really dirty quick, so you gotta always kind of turn the rag, get a clean spot. And I'm not being real aggressive with like mixing it because, it, like I said, it will get muddy. So I kind of just lay the color down without having it pull up and get too too thick in spots. Again, it's a flat piece of wood, so it's kind of easy. But you know, that's what it's going to look like when it would get clear on it. Um, kind of a dark purpley reddish color, which is really really kind of cool and it doesn't take a lot you know something like that takes uh, no sanding out process it's just kind of a nice deliberate two stain process on top of each other and you also have to know when to say okay it looks good enough I like it um, back away from it or even come at it at another time because you will over mix it and it will get um, it will go south at some point but even with this color if, if, if I thought it was a little too dark now, generally, I would let it dry, so I am, for the sake of this, just kind of going back at it to pull out some water just to give it a little more contrast, just to brighten it up some. So I'm not really losing what the color was. I'm just pulling some of the brights out. I always want to dab it, so I don't want the color to, or the water to, to pool up anywhere. So you can still see those faint pinks and the purples in there, and you're starting to think, well, there's reds and blues, 
and you really start going outside of the, the normal color realm. Same thing with this, this blue here. So this is kind of a, a blue that we use often. Uh, we have Blue Mateo, um, which is similar to, the, to this color, Bahamian blue, so kind of light, uh, watery type blues. And with this one, I'm gonna, I want it to, I want to lighten up, pull some contrast out of it. And you can already see some greens pulling up. And what that is, is it's the, it's the natural tone of the, the color of the, the, the top, the wood. So that yellow's coming through and, sh and shining through that blue, making the green. And then to get green, um, instead of just using kind of green out of a bottle, we'll use multiple layers of colors. So yellow and blue make green and, you know, to see what happens. Again, you start to get these multi-tones, yellows and blues and greens. So you get this sort of electric lime kind of color, but you can still see the blue. You can still see the yellow. You've got this like all these hues popping through that you wouldn't get if you just used green. And that yellow by itself was that. So it's very bright yellow. And not a yellow that I would necessarily use um, by itself. So a lot of these colors are, are good in combination with other colors. Like this red I stained earlier. Now I'm going to pull some of it out and I should get more of a pink on one side. It's kind of like a blood orange. Or we do a, a color that we did for Carlos called Salmon. And uh, it's kind of like this where you start to get pinks and reds and, and that color of the top starts to shine through and give you sort of these like fleshy tones. And once you pull out as much as you can, it'll just start, and that's really wild looking. See, a lot of times it just looks great like that and, and it's 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 mother nature it's not it's not the colors it's not you know it's not me it's having these killer pieces of wood that are just mind-blowing so when you when you stain it with a, just a simple red and you wash it out you're like whoa it's wild it's amazing what uh the the grade of wood that we get i'm i'm constantly looking through tops uh, astounded really because I just I'm always surprised at something I see that that uh, that mother nature gave us is pretty it's pretty amazing so now I'm gonna go over and try to pull some of the yellows out and now I'm at like a Santana orange yeah that's nice and these are all cuttings from private stock. So I know that um, these guitars look pretty sweet because these are really nice cutoffs. And these are nice, nice stain samples. To be able to do the same thing we do back home. Yeah, so you got like a Santana orange. That's really cool. A lot of times it just, a lot of things just come out of accidents, like I said, and you know, many times I'm doing a stain demo and I find things that, uh, that we don't really do at home and, and maybe we find, find a way to incorporate it back home. Um, it tends to be a challenge because I do go fast on, on some of this stuff. So it's hard to like deconstruct some of the things that I've done by adding so many different colors. 
but it is fun and challenging for sure. We have a color called Dragon's Breath that really, it, it started off as a color that turned into a way a guitar is stained, um, that it looks kind of like a burst that's off center and uh, looks like the breath of a dragon coming off the guitar. <clears throat> the first ones we did were a yellow to a red, so it even looked like fire. But then has come into a, a just a pattern more than anything all its own where we have purple dragon's breath and violet dragon's breath and you know all kind of wild names for it. So what I did here is I just took the color and added a lot of water to it and kind of faded it down and just blended it out at the end. So it's there's not a whole lot of yellow down there. And then what I'll do is I'll come up the other way with with a red. And we have a color called Tequila Sunrise that kind of started this particular fade. With a lot of these colors, it helps to work kind of quick because you don't want the you don't want it to dry at any point because you'll get these hard lines. So I'll go back and then sort of kind of dry rag it. red and then a lot of times what we'll do is sort of do a cut do it in the way we did this charcoal where we'll go over it with another color so that the color on top gets kind of dark so that's kind of candy coated uh, you know it's not there's not a whole lot of uh of range going on so i would like to darken it up on the bottom a little bit and i'll probably I'll go with like a brown and what i can do is i can darken up the red so it really kind of spans more of a a distance of color That way it darkens it up some and gives more, more contrast. And then I'll come back with the red, that'll be the yellow more. And that helps brighten it up. helps to have killer pieces of wood. So that's a that's an example of sort of like a fade that we would do. A quick example for sure. At the shop sometimes these colors will take us three or four hours to do because it's always good when you're putting this much water in the top. Got to let it dry, go back to it, maybe work on another guitar. Um, it is a, uh, it's not a quick process but it's nothing that you can really relax at either. You always have to be on your toes when you're staying in these guitars. So I stained this one an orange yellow earlier. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit a little bit of water. Get some contrast, a little bit of yellow in there. Back to the brown. Just do sort of like a more of a burst of a traditional burst color, but in a stain as opposed to a sprayed burst. So 
see if you get really light at it. You start to get kind of a vintage vibe burst by just staining and not using a spray gun, and which ends up being really cool because the colors, you know, it's interacting with the wood in a different way than layering paint over top of it. And the more you add, the darker it gets. And it's kind of a cool, it's kind of a cool vintage burst. Here's another brown, a little bit darker. This brown has more black in it where this brown over here had a little bit more red. <clears throat> so this might be more of a traditional tobacco sort of style brown. Doing the same thing, just kind of getting a nice even coat on it. Then I'm gonna lighten it up with some yellow. So basically you would be looking at these two colors mixed. So it definitely lightens it up because of the water. But there's an element of green that starts to show up when you start doing yellows and blacks or yellows and browns. This one's not too bad. Kind of a chestnut sort of color. And if I wanted to brighten it up some, try to go in maybe the tiger eye world, adding a little orange. And I'm, I'm using straight concentrated colors out of bottles too. So um, the colors are pretty intense as I'm doing this. Uh, a lot of times what we'll do is we will have to dilute the color with water or, or alcohol or um, just ways to get it not so intense. So we, we, we utilize um, a lot of techniques doing this and it's a lot of trial and error, a lot of experimentation. So now we're looking at amber. So I went from sort of a walnut brown, adding the yellow to like a chestnut. Now I've added a little more orange to it. So now I'm at an amber. All really cool ways to like get to a, a, a destination with your color. And the more orange I put in, it starts to go to like an orange tiger or some sort of, maybe even a copperhead. And if I add a red to it, we should get to sort of a black cherry color. So again, depending on how many coats you put on it, how much water you put on it, can determine which direction you're going and what your color color is. So it's a it's cherry amber. But if you let it dry and you layer another coat on it, you start the red starts to dominate and you start to get into the black cherry world. So that's uh that's how we do it at PRS is you know a lot of hand work. A lot of uh, experimenting um, and a lot of uh, a lot of just trying different things, things that aren't traditional or things that uh, are traditional that you're mixing and thinking, thinking of color outside of uh, normal color thought or color theory. Yeah, it's been fun. Thank you.